I'm working on a video that utilizes this book, The Solo Wargaming Guide, for some tactics of the monsters that I'm going to be encountering. And I realized that I never did present this book at all in a review, and I meant to do that. It is a, I received this from the publisher, Tracy Intermedia, and it is William Silverstone's Field William Silverster's Field Guide for Wargaming Without an Opponent. And I just wanted to give you a quick look inside it. I find it extremely useful. It's a thin book, but there's a lot of great content here. And here are some of the uh, credits and the publishing credits for it. You can see there. It is, it offers a mixture of some small charts and tables and some discussion about a really wide range of potential topics for wargaming campaigns. There's sea campaigns. Uh, they touch on fantasy, which we'll take a quick look at. They offer a sample campaign. This is a historical based campaign that shows how they use some of the materials in the book. And uh, the first part of it here is at the campaign level. We'll take a look inside. And then it moves to the tactical level. And it even covers air warfare. And there's a short discussion on solo board games. I think what I find particularly useful about it is its brevity. That um, the tables themselves are, I think it's all, D all D6s probably. And certainly the overall content, while covering a lot of material is not um, so lengthy and it makes it very easy to get into it. I'm not going to go through the, uh, the narrative here, but it does give you some basic explanation about what you might be considering when you're planning. This first part of the book is about campaigns, when you're planning a campaign and the kinds of things you might be thinking about. And um, you can see this is a very macro chart, as you would expect for a campaign guide, where it's explaining, for example, here is terrain, the type of unit, and then the impact it would have on movement. So really starting very big, this is assuming even that you're making your own map and there are discussions um, in the book of how to make maps and um, how to ex uh, do sort of broad level tactics um, where you make up different plans and it's your d6 role here, plan one, plan two, plan three. Again, not terribly complicated, but it's great to have it in one spot, I think, if you're working that way. Now, I have to hasten to say I've never done any type of creation at the campaign level of something myself. I do a lot that's much more localized and tactical with the solo RPG stuff that I do. And this is where I um, use it. And this is where I have been using it as I put together the, vi the next video that I'm working on um, when I realized I hadn't presented this on its own. There are, um, there's a time chart here that will give you different suggestions of how many turns, for example, daylight and night would be in different seasons if you wanted to use that. I personally always have difficulty keeping track of time in uh, what I'm doing and I'm actually going to be experimenting with a new method in the next video. There are, there's weather here, a weather table, and there's actually a sample weather chart that suggests what the weather uh, might be during various months of the year. And of course, then that would go back to the impact on travel and movement and things like that. There's a section on logistics and attrition, and it comes with some charts again uh, in terms of what you can, again, this is campaign level, so um, you're given very broad brush suggestions here about how this could work. Morale roles here. Uh, there is a basic CRT that's based on morale. We'll just move a little faster through here. There's some um, siege charts here for the different types of structures that might be under attack, a wooden building, a stone, etc., and what the defense factor could possibly be. And further indication of, as time passes, some attrition that might happen for your troops in terms of this health issue and obviously uh, logistics and supply there as well. And I'll just skip ahead. We have some C campaigns, something I personally have never done myself. And uh, this would have to do with, well, they have this competency rating here for the captain and this is later on. I am actually going to be demonstrating this in 
the thing the thing that I'm working on because I think um, there's a little bit of a digression from the book, but I think that when uh, doing solo RPGing, what sometimes happens is the the monsters or whatever it just kind of appear and you deal with them, and sometimes you're choosing how many are appear, but there's not really ever a sense of their leader, or, or I often leave out the sense of the leader or the command or their own. Uh, goals and things and how their leadership could impact that and I'm going to be picking up something from here to kind of get that into the next thing that I'm doing. Here is a storm at sea chart and some storm damage chart. Again you can see these are all D6s, uh, D6 tables so very easy and some discussion here about what it means to do solo wargaming and how you can bring your own personality and interests to it and we have the section on fantasy here with some discussions of what this might mean to uh, in terms of terrains and maps and the actual strength values of um, fantasy creatures, some creatures who may not be seen and there's a detection, a uh, little short detection chart here if you're dealing with something like an elf or a sprite or something that may reveal itself to you. Again, not very long but particularly useful. Then in this section of the book there's an entire campaign here that is uh, narr narrated so you can see how the um, the writer uses the tools that have been presented in the book, including this map here. And then we get to the tactical level section of the book, which will be um, easier to, well, as I said, this is all I've ever done. Um, so I shouldn't say whether it's easier or not. It, it's more, for me at any rate, more logical and perhaps interesting to work at this level when I'm trying to do something. There is a cool uh, section here that is using uh, playing cards to create a random terrain here and you can see the little chart here for the random terrain cards based on your any deck of poker cards that you might have and what that terrain might mean and laying them out and creating something that way. I don't know how visually, for me, how visually that would work. I think I would need to do this and then maybe draw my own map because I would be distracted by the actual faces of the cards. But that's a really quick and easy way to get a map going with something that you very likely already have around your house. Weather, uh, including uh, movement and off-road and on-road and a lot of bu bunch of stuff about weather. And here is, we've got this commander's competency section that I was talking about in terms of, again, just a D6 table, how likely are the commander's orders going to be followed? And then, um, this is a little out of order here, but then you can look here at, uh, for example, what happens overnight based on the commander competency level here and your role, what is going to happen to the, the troops, the minions, the the monsters or whatever in the case of what I'm doing overnight uh, or perhaps even for the next turn. So I'm definitely going to be adapting that and using it uh, in my next uh, video that I do that uses some material from this book. Here's what happens when you lose your commander and uh, rules for determining if that happens. There's rally rules and things of this nature. Keep going here. Concealment rules here for hiding, ambush, what's happening. Again, basic D6 roll, and you can see here an ambush order if you wanted to go this way and talk about uh, what happens when an order is given and how it could possibly be followed. Some sort of random stuff back here, laying minefields. There's a very short section on air war, air warfare, uh, something, again, I've never ever have done, and I think only in I guess Pegasus Bridge had like the, the land in terms of the games that I've played um, uh, landing. I don't know what else I've done that even involves anything. Here's the landing gliders section. And then um, here at the back, a little discussion of board games where they are, I think they're, you know, obviously this is miniatures based. I guess I should have said that at the beginning, uh, but adapting it, I'm adapting it certainly for board games because I don't do miniatures. There's a little discussion here about that. And there is um, a checklist that you are offered for if you're doing an actual campaign. 
to look at the bigger picture thing and follow through what you might need to might need to do and a very useful bibliography of other materials that could be useful to the solo wargamer. So that's a look inside the slim but extremely useful solo wargaming guide and if you want to see a little bit of this in action you can tune into uh, the video that I'm working on that is going to utilize this as well as um, some other material to come up with some tactics for the monsters that I will be encountering. As always, thanks for watching.